Uh, hello. <clears throat> I'm back again to <clears throat> carry on with uh, part three. Um, and after looking at these, uh, maybe part three is to uh, tidy up some uh, details of uh, part two. Namely, I just discovered something here that I said earlier that these two maps are the same. This is the one you can get called the unified analysis, and this is the one that you would get uh, from the facts or downloaded from some uh, source that you might have uh, underway, and that they were the same. However, I've noticed something that the trend on these, uh, these station model reports now on the, um, on the, um, fax maps are getting more and more abbreviated. They were always abbreviated. They never used to include, uh, and they don't still, the temperature and dew point and so forth and cloud cover. But they do sometimes include parts of that, but it seems less now. For example, on this one that we used as an example, uh, we used as an example last time. Uh, let's see, how do I make that bigger here? Bigger, okay. Um, this station model report right here. Whoops, uh, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Uh, this station model report right here. Uh, here's the equivalent over here on the fax map that you get underway. And um, notice they don't give you the tendency here anymore, and they're not giving you the um, they're not giving you the characteristic code. This little symbol out here we discussed. Now, some of them do give you this. This is what's called the present weather. And uh, that, that just, and there's a list of these I'm going to show you in the reference book, which I can now get to. That's a symbol means fog, I, I believe. We'll double check that. Um, and so the first thing is when you, this is a map you're dealing with, you only have, it looks like you have the pressure and the wind and the location, and that's about it. Although some of them, I've looked at maps even fairly recently that had a lot more information in the station reports. It may have to do with the individual who's responsible for making the maps. Um, but um, so first, let me let me just say this then, because you want to probably practice at home with the maps that you're going to really see when you're underway. So let me just remind you where you these. I showed where you get them. These, let me show you where you can get these. I said I wasn't going to do sources, but uh, here. This is the main homepage, Ocean Prediction Center. That's a U.S. marine weather source. And then you come over to here on the left and go to Fax Schedules. Click that, and then click Pacific. And then you go down, and this is the actual schedule uh, that you will get on your, um, uh, the Coast Guard relays the, this information from the National Weather Service and broadcasts these on radio facsimile. And then you can go down here and see the times. Very important to keep all this in mind that, uh, for example, this, um, uh, if we go down here, here's a 12 Zulu uh, preliminary. Here's the final, and they break the Pacific up into one half by longitude and the other half. And uh, the, the part that we're dealing with here is on the, on the, on the west, eastern side. And so that's a 12 Zulu map. It's valid at 12 Zulu, but that you see you don't get it. It's 1513 when it's first broadcast for 1531. So you, that map's going to be 3 hours and 30 minutes old when you get it this way. Now, when you get the actual GRIB file that's equivalent to that, that could be another hour more even, or at least another half an hour. But if you just go in here and then click one of these, like the TIFF is a nice nice uh, high resolution one that's that's this one and that's the one we're looking at so that's a way you can uh, practice uh, practice with those um, oops wrong thing I don't want my mail uh, let me close okay so uh, force quit okay so let me go back to those pictures that were oh, oh gosh okay don't I need to get my icon straightened out okay here we go now uh, so so that's that map and then what i did fail to also show the last time was um, um the book i wanted to show you and this is the reference book that it's our book here from starpath and it has this information in it um the weather symbols um well you could just search on uh well wait a minute i did search before search result weather uh, 
Uh, let's see, I want maybe. Why is it not working? Okay, here are the weather symbols. Oops, let me reload that. Uh, the weather symbols. Um, all right. Um, oh, my mouse is not. Okay, there you go, weather symbols. So these are those present weather symbols, and we saw, what would we see? Three, oh yeah, it is fog. Fog, sky not, discernible, and so forth. So those are the weather symbols that periodically show up with that. But uh, this is the book. Uh, this is the book that's available here at Starpath. Uh, let's see, do we have that somewhere here? Yeah, you can get that book here, starpath.com. Um, then uh, back to that book. What we're going to eventually get to is uh, the section called uh, "Wind from uh, Figuring Wind from Isobars," and in particular, this section, this book covers that. How to uh, I don't know, not rolling, not scrolling. Maybe I have to go page it or something. Okay, yeah, we're going to use this table. This table and then the instructions for doing that are here, and I'm going to uh, illustrate that uh, very shortly. Um, and then let me go back to our maps. So what else did I wanted to say? Oh, okay, just again some bait. Let's now put this guy away because that, we got to really look at uh, what we're dealing with on um, the real maps at sea. So here, let, just let me just mention a couple basics that I may have just skimmed over. These are the isobars, the value of the pressure. And uh, so this one, and you see, I don't see any labels here anywhere. So you have to kind of hunt around on the map. But it's important to know they are four millibars apart. And this is a high, over here is low, so from here they're going down. So even though I only see this number here, this is 24, this is 20, that's 16, that's um, 12, and so on. And uh, 12, and then 8, 8 millibars. And if you circle around here, see here's the 12 marked on that one. That's the way you find that out. And the basic, uh, the basic rules that we're dealing with, um, explained in the book is the closer these isobars, the stronger the wind. This is actually, even though they don't show this here, I'm going to show you in the next section how to figure out the wind from these isobars here, what direction and so forth. And um, see here they show one, and you you could do this. Here's a easy, here's a quick and easy way. See the the wind speed that you experience on on this map depends on two things. It depends on your latitude, that's 50 north, 40, 30, and it also depends on the spacing of the isobars. So here's, um, here we just look right at latitude, whatever this latitude is, you see. This latitude has 20 knots, or the, what I remember, nominal 20 knots, uh, with this kind of spacing. Well, this is all the same latitude, so the latitude factor is the same. So what's going to happen here is this wind is definitely bigger than 20 knots over here. And you see, I don't know, it's going to be 30 something, maybe more, but not much more than, not 40 certainly, but it's going to be more than 20. And probably, you know, looking at that kind of spacing and so forth, something around 30 probably. But we can figure that very more, precise, more precisely a little bit later on. So that's the, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention too that I just kind of glazed over was this concept of a trough. This is a trough. Now, by definition, a trough means it's a local elongated area of low pressure. So that means that sailing this direction, this pressure, as you go towards that trough, has to decrease. And as you go across a trough, that's the low pressure, and then the pressure rises. So even though this is 1004, and this is 10... Um, well, this is going to be 1,000 millibars right here, 1,000 millibars, 1004. So right about here is 1002. But sure enough, when you're sailing down here, this can't be, if this is 1002 here, it's got to be lower. Than, if that's a real trough, it's got to be lower a little bit right here and then rise again coming over here. So you can, with an accurate barometer, you can actually see what's going on by watching such things and understanding the meaning of a sim this symbol. A trough means it's a local low pressure. As you approach it, it's got to drop. You cross it, it's got to go up. 
Same way with all of these. Let's see if there's a ridge anywhere on this map. I don't see a ridge. A ridge is drawn, this is, um, actually this is kind of a ridge right here, but they don't draw it that way. So they could draw a line in here with a crooked, uh, let's see, can I draw a line? Uh, well, I don't know if I can draw a line, but a, a map here that would have a like a zigzag line right across there, a zigzag line. Now that would be a ridge of high pressure. That means that even though this nominally looks all the same, this is 10, um, what is this one? This is 1024, 1024. And now this is, you see how this is kind of a ridge through here. This pressure, even though there's nothing marked here, there's no pressures marked in this region at all, but this pressure has to go up and then back down. This is a, this is a ridge even though it's not marked right across right across here. No, notice the troughs are bending up the other way in, with, a, with this high. Uh, so that's a, that's a note on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about these two maps, if you're sailing offshore, then these are the ones you want to study. But if you're in fact uh, going to be in coastal waters or in your local coastal sailing, then you're probably going to be better off looking at the uh, unified analysis maps. So these are just a few uh, follow-ups on, um, on uh, what we covered before. Um, and then I'm going to come back and look at, uh, we want to plot positions on here, and then we want to read, like for example, what would you guess the wind speed is right here, or right here, or like in right in here. So that's what we want to figure out. All right, so that'll be the end of this part three.